Hey there everybody, Joe here. Thanks for watching again. So if you want to paint sand dunes, then it really helps to have a three-dimensional understanding of their shape. So let's get started and I'll show you exactly what I mean. The colors I'll be using are my highlight colors. So I'm just going to put some here just for a good, a good visual. And then we'll do the mid-tone. You can see this is distinctly a little bit more red. Working from a mid-tone is better than mixing a highlight directly with the shadow color. So here we have the shadow color that I'll be using. The way these colors compare to my blackest option uh, is, is just like you're seeing here, I have lots of room to get darker if I want to. And that's just a wise decision in a painting because you, you leave yourself lots of room for highlights and for dark shadows, for accents in your picture. I got a little bit of black in my white, but I want you to see just how this compares to my brightest white, my darkest black. So let's get started with the shape of a single sand dune. Without even rinsing my brush, I'm just going to take the mid-tone, how about, and create a sand dune somewhere close to the middle here. The important thing to understand about a dune is that it has a ridge at the top, and that ridge is usually not straight. It zigzags, you know, into the background or the foreground. And so as you move to the background, the, the shapes of the ridges are, are going to get scrunched just like any landscape. You wanna see lots of horizontal lines. And then you can see as I come down in the picture, I start sloping downward more freely. Okay, let's put light and shadow on it. I think I'll put the light on the left side. Okay, light on this side. So I'm just going along wherever I have this. Now I could have done this without even painting that zigzag line, but I want you to see what I'm thinking here. Okay, now let's put the shadow on the other side. But before I do that, I'm going to put the mid-tone because I don't really want that shadow to, here I'll show you what it looks like. If the shadow directly touches this, you know, it's okay, it's just not great, you know. Let's put that there and let's put some here. It doesn't matter if I perfectly follow my original line, it's, it's close. So it's made on the ridge there because there's a lack of color. You know, the dark color mixing with the light kind of makes something a little bit more gray and green than I want to see. It'll look better if I start with the mid-tone. So let's put the mid-tone right here. And then adding my shadow will look better. And now I'll, I'll make the shadow a mix of the mid-tone and the shadow color. I don't need to go super dark on it, so we'll mix them there. I don't know, some, something like 50-50, whatever. Okay, then I come right up to that mid-tone color. Sometimes I like to call it a transition color because it transitions from one color to the next. Okay, that's how I make a dune. And you might want to make smoother lines here. See, this This makes that that real smooth, wind-blown look if I, if I don't make sharp corners. It's up to you, the look you want. You know, I'm I'm going to show you how to how to make it three-dimensional and, and get the general look of the dune, but you can decide the details. Let's work on the front here because I want you to see how they taper down to nothing and then blend into the valley between two other dunes. If you go online and you look at pictures of sand dunes, it's really amazing to see how uh, uh, aerial view, like you're looking from an airplane or drone footage, when you're way far away looking down at sand dunes, they look very similar to the very tiny ripples that you see maybe in the sand on the beach when you have the wind or the water gently making all those little ripples. And you see those in dunes too, you see the tiny ripples from the wind, same thing. Uh, the large pattern resembles the small pattern, they, it's like the big pattern made out of the small pattern, made out of a smaller pattern. I just think that's a really fun, fascinating thing. I'll take the white, put it here, mix some purple with that white, and then I'll take my highlight color and put it in there. Now this is a good highlight color 
for my distant hills like this you see and so anywhere I want these to look far away I'll, I'll just create a few little peaks that blend into this shadow too just we'll just go across and make some real distant background on this now maybe some very subtle uh, peaks in there not not big high sharp ones because these are dunes you know but we'll go go like this put a few little peaks in this let's make our shadow color by adding purple and some mid-tone like that and some blue because we want it far away so I'm adding my blue sky color wherever I have a right side I can do this so I could have done just one or just the other you know I don't have to do both I can stack them on top of each other to make those zigzags you know maybe this is a zigzagging ridge that you can see in perspective you don't want to think of a dune as a pyramid you want to think of it as something with a with a, a snake-like pattern that goes for some distance but the perspective causes it to look very pyramid-like wherever shadow meets highlight the mid-tone helps it to maintain color the natural world has a lot more color in the shadows than what the paint will end up reproducing when you mix it and sometimes you know when I look at pictures of dunes sometimes I get I get lost in what I'm looking at. I don't I don't know where one dune stops another begins when when I look far away you know so uh, so I, I don't want to think too hard about making sure that I can see both sides of every single dune that I create we'll put the shadow color on this side and we'll make it real bold you know this shadow color this is a real big close one maybe we're looking at this from a high vantage point you know I kind of stage this like we're looking down start making this get brighter here you know they don't all have to be perfect ridges we might make a, a smooth slope so I think having the presence of that pattern is fun but then I also like to break it up a little bit with less ordinary shape so we'll make a more round one you know maybe you're just really standing on the edge of a, a dune that gets real steep just drops off down there Ooh, this will be fun I just had an idea look let's grab a little bit of this color and let's put some footprints watch who knows what they're from but it'd be fun to put little footprints in here. Okay, shadow. It's like making miniature dunes. Now highlight. Dunk, 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 junk. It's just a little swoop of the brush. There we go. <laughs> you know, like someone going down. Someone going down into the dunes. There, anywhere where my line comes down even if it's just just a tiny one those would be areas facing directly left which might catch a little bit more light if that light was coming from straight over here this ridge maybe is facing right toward me so just just think about that you know it might just look like a hill that's halfway in the shadow halfway in the light you can control the direction on these shapes by thinking that through. So here it gets darker, darker, darker. See how I went from my bright highlight to my mid-tone like that. Let's put a little bit of blue in there because it is further away now. So let's add the sky color. Let's do that. Let's do the same thing here. There, we've got some bigger dunes in the foreground now. Okay, I'm gonna quit right there. I hope you enjoyed the video. I would love to hear your comments. And uh, as always, it's really, really good for me and for the YouTube channel if you uh, subscribe and give me the, uh, give me the privilege of, of showing you things in the future. You can also check out my website, muraljoe.com, for more videos there.